Hey gang, Elizabeth here, Dandy Soap Channel, and I have something new for us to do for Easter, uh, for our beginning of our spring and celebrate Easter. I got this bunny in the kids section at the Dollar Tree, and this here is a burner cover. This is the small one, and then I've got some leftover pieces of burlap and the painter's canvas cloth. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to take this here bunny and we're going to cover it with the burlap and the painter's cloth. And we're going to probably use these markers. These markers are really good, guys. If you've never used them, they're actually very good quality. And we'll probably put some of the details in. But basically, we're going to Mod Podge our burlap onto this bunny. And we're going to create us a scene. All right, so with that being said, let me clear this off and let's get started. Now, guys, before I go to Mod Podge and anything, I'm going to trace out my bunny because I want to keep some of this detail. But it might help in bringing this around to his foot and then that way i've got my bunny rabbit i know where his head's at where everything's laid out so that when i get ready to decoupage my burlap and my stuff on here i'll know where everything's going to go since you can see through the burlap you might can take your marker and you know that it's kind of coming right here and we kind of sketched his leg and we can make his hip and then that way it can come about and that way when we glue it on his little foot's going to stick out down here then if you decide you want his foot to also be part of that you could really very well go ahead and just sketch that Also, guys, I have this tracing light, and it is flat, and if you want to know how to get one of these, I love this thing, because you would not believe how many things I've used it for. Um, it is really great for helping you um, if you um, want to do, like, any kind of stitching or cross-stitching, and it's just got a little, little button right here. You can actually uh, turn it down brighten it up um, if you want it to go down you just touch and hold it and you can dim it down and I'm going to leave it dim because I can still see and you guys can see what I'm doing as well but if you'd like to get one of these um, I will give you my affiliate link it'll be in the description box down below and you can click on it and it'll take you straight over there where I bought it from through Amazon Okay, guys, I got all my parts cut out for my bunny rabbit. Remember what I told you? To always dampen your brush before putting on your Mod Podge. And that just allows for a even coat, no bubbling, no sizzing, and fizzing, and that kind of thing. Okay, guys, we're going to let that dry and just let it be. Once it dries, we'll be able to move to the next step. So, guys, now our Mod Podge has dried. And another thing that I did and I wanted to share with you guys is take your sponge block and sand it to smooth it off if it's ridgy. Uh, like I had a lot of fray, and they'll just smooth that off. So it's no big deal, but just so it won't be rough. And if you will also notice, I have changed up on you guys. I have decided not to use the stove cover. I'm going to use my 
fantabulous bucket instead. I've got some rocks down in there just because I have a kitty cat in my house and he likes to run and play and I'm afraid he'll knock it over. And I made me a cardboard insert that's going to go over top. I glued some tabs on the side so that after I decorate the top of this, if I want to change it out and use this bucket for something else but save my platform, I'll be able to pull it out with the tabs. So, moving onward, just so we can get our bunny rabbit done, I am bringing him back up here so you guys can see. I know it's a little crowded on here, and I'll do my best. Now, remember, we took and we drew us out our bunny rabbit on the paper, so that way we would know where everything is. And I can really actually pretty much make out a lot of the stuff that we had done with the marker before. And, of course, right here is his little nose. You can see that. And then his eye, I can make out where that was. Um, hopefully, you guys will have the same luck in finding yours. Now, remember the little pins that came in the pack? I'm going to take the pink. And that area right there of his ear, as we did on our little trace out. And I'm going to try this pin and see how well it'll come through, which it looks like it's going to do a heck of a good job. I have these pom-poms that I had gotten back during Halloween. And so, of course, I'm going to get a black one out for his little nose. And you could do white if you want to. I mean, there's no rules, guys. This is yours. And I'm going to check and see which fluffy tail is going to look the best. And even just a regular cotton ball will look just fine there, guys. If y'all don't want to go out and get pom-poms, Get that in place. Takes care of his nose. And then for his tail, I think that I want to go ahead and do this antiquing before I do his tail. We have some other tasks that we are going to do on this particular project, guys. And I'm straight taking a dry brush. I'm not wetting that brush because this is a wax. This is the Waverly Antiquing Wax. Just want to show you guys. And I'm going to be going around. I'm just taking off the excess. Because it don't take a lot. And you can actually go behind this and rub it. And see what I'm doing here? I am just, just smearing that on the edge. Just to give it some depth in there. Okay guys. So what I did is I went ahead and I put these puff balls on. And I put that staining around the outer edge. Now, I did that because I wanted you guys to see. I'm just kind of vintaging him. This will all be hidden, most likely. So this is what I'm going to do. I've already got that styrofoam there. That styrofoam is really no big deal. So I've got it already inside of the bucket. Now, this is the way this is going to work. I'm going to put my insert in here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I have... The accessor that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be putting that on this base. However, before I do that, I'm also going to take one of these skews. And I'm going to glue it to my bunny. Because I want him to sit a little bit higher. Of, you know, I want him to sit up here. I hope you guys can see that. On the bucket. I want him to be up here. Take something like this, for example. And one side is kind of... That's the side you can see, and that one goes inside. But I always turn it to where I can, I know where my measurement is, about where I want it, and just like that, boom, it's gone. That quick, no, no, no hard work on your part. I'm going to open this. Now, I am not a fan of the glitter for this particular setting because it's looking more primitive. So, I'm going to take the chalk paint, and I will probably do most of this off of the camera. I've got a skew left over from some Valentine's, and I'm going to take that skew, 
to where I can hold my egg. Now, another thing that I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put a little piece of burlap here just to help kind of blend everything in, kind of camouflage. been working on this and moving things around you guys from the last DIY I did I had the leftover wire mesh from my basket and I'm actually bent it and shaped it and placed it in this pail to look like the bunny is on the inside of my garden fence per se or yard fence whichever and I literally just stuck it into the bucket, guys. I just bent it and shaped it to where it would go down in the bucket. And I've just got the carrots laying there and the eggs in there for right now. I haven't glued anything. I'm just staging it. I'm going to go back to the oven cover we originally shown. It has home is where the family gathers. I'm going to take some of my buffalo check fabric. And I'm going to glue that on there and just trim off the difference. I still want it to be round. I think for sanity's sake, before I end up dragging all of my Sessler out, I am going to actually put some glue on this. Now I have my carrots, and I want to put them here. I want them kind of leaning on the fence, but together. So I am literally going to take a small amount of the hot glue and put those two side by side. That way they'll stay kind of laying right there on the fence. And put a small amount on this one because I want him to lay right there in between. And I've done the stove cover and I had to part, I had to piece my fabric together up here. This part is actually the part I'm going to leave sticking up because whenever I have the bunny here and I put that background, you see, you'll be able to tell because it'll be closer to the bunny. So that up there at the top will be covered by the Happy Easter that I'll put on there. I hope you can see this. It is just looking gorgeous. You know I'll give you some good photographs. It is looking really super. And I'm actually contemplating a, a bow. I have this blue which is really popping with all this. Alright guys, this is part of the DIY where you find out that some things you should have done in advance. But you, you know, you're working your DIY so you don't know. So I'm going to show you guys a trick. Because this bucket is wider up top than it is down here, right here in the middle where I'm probably going to put the bow, of course, I, you're going to take that ribbon, and because it's going to be baggier, you're actually going to twist it, okay? And then to make it so that the grain is correct with the other, you're going to twist it again. See, right there in the middle? So that it is continuously going around. The back side of the bucket and then just I'm going to glue it right here and you know I'm going to cut the excess off and glue it now I'm going to do a cheater's bow <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it and uh, you know it's not really a cheater's bow it, remember I told you guys where there's no need to I'm probably not going to put any tails on that one so, you know, I just bring my two pieces together and where they intersect and determining how big I want my bow about the width of the bucket 
and finding your halfway point, you just fold it in half and you'll see where those two sections intersect. You want that to go just beyond the center so it's not too short. Just make sure they're overlapping each other. And this ribbon's really nice, guys. All right, so you know, I just fold it and turn it back. I got my little bow there, so I need to put me a piece around it. And I don't need a too wide a piece on this particular bow. We're at the end of our DIY for today. Thank you so much for coming along and doing with me my little vintage bunny rabbit using the kids' uh, wooden rabbit from the Dollar Tree and the carrots. Everything that you see here came from the Dollar Tree. Bucket and all. Even the stones that are inside the, the bucket, the sign, everything. So you guys, thank you so much for coming along. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please see that subscribe button right there go down and hit the actual subscribe word and the bell will come up and hit all so that you get all notifications that way every time i put up a new video you'll be the first to know if you haven't hit the thumbs up like please hit that like i really appreciate it, it helps me rank up further in the uh listings there on youtube and uh, definitely share this with all your family friends or anyone who just enjoys diys and so you guys, uh, if you haven't joined the Facebook Dandy Soap DIY page down there in the comment and click and go over there and uh, join the gang. If you guys didn't know it, you can actually hit that little cross. You see that little cross right there. Hit that plus sign and create you a playlist. If you have a playlist, then of course, you know, you click it and you can add this video to it. Just make sure you do it before the video ends so that you have time to get it added on before the video uh, finishes. That's the best way to get your way back to this video is to create you your own playlist or your own little list and save it. So you guys, this is Elizabeth saying thank you for coming along. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you for all your support. And to all new subscribers, hello and welcome. Thank you so much. I'm, so you guys, I'm going to let you go. And until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth saying thank you, thank you. And over and out. Bye, guys.